I would like to welcome you all to Student Voices inside SCMA. My name is Lauren Shea Warner and I am the Membership Engagement and Stewardship Coordinator. Today's program features Ariella High C, Class of 22, and Charlie Diaz, Class of 22. Martha Ebner, Acting Associate Director of Marketing and Communications. Before I hand this over to our um, participants, I wanted to mention a few housekeeping items. We encourage you to type in the Q&A box throughout the presentation. Charlie and Ariella will be following along and look forward to answering any questions you may have. I will now turn it over to Martha. Thank you so much, Lauren, and welcome everyone. Thank you for being here. I'm so glad you've joined us. My name is Martha Ebner, and I'm the Acting Associate Director of Marketing and Communications at the Smith College Museum of Art. I'm delighted to introduce my two amazing work study students, Charlie Diaz and Ariella High-C, both Smith Class of 2022. Before we hear from them though, I'd like to share some information about the SCMA Marketing and Communications Department, also known as the MARCOM Department. So here is the mission and the digital vision for the museum. The Smith College Museum of Art cultivates inquiry and reflection by connecting people to art, ideas, and each other. And I cannot talk about the work we've done and continue to do without talking about the pandemic. At the start of the pandemic, we had to pivot and adjust the ways in which we worked, as did everyone else. And to do that, we created a digital vision to support the mission. We support the mission by embracing digital activity and skills across the museum using digital platforms and channels in order to provide rich content for existing and new audiences for art, to nurture and sustain an engaged arts community, and to realize revenue opportunities by supporting membership and the museum shop. To do this work, we followed some guiding factors, including incorporating best practices from the museum sector, shifting our priorities to align with the museum's current resources, integrating staff identified priorities into the MARCOM planning process. We incorporated assessment, which you'll hear a lot more about at the next Student Voices on April 28th with Jess Henry Cross, Financial and Systems Coordinator and her student, Hannah Gates, class of 2022. And we had to remain flexible and adaptable as did everybody else. So with that, I'd like to introduce Charlie Diaz, SCMA's PR and Media Work Study Assistant. Welcome, Charlie. Hi. Hi. I'm Charlie. Um, I'm the student PR and communications assistant. I'm class of 22. I'm a swag major, and I live in Cutter House for any alumna. And I'm going to run you through some of the things I do for SCMA. So I started in fall of 2019 at my current position. Oop, too fast. Um, and some of the things I do are museum e-blast, list maintenance, event promotion, postering, and then I have a personal interest in diversity, equity, access, and inclusion work. So my main work is in e-blast. So this is a picture of one of the e-blasts that we send out every month. So with the mission that Martha just shared, we talked about our mission to connect people to art ideas in each other. And starting with the pandemic, everyone kind of had to re-figure out where we are. And part of that is reaching people at home. So this graphic here, you can see part of what I do in my eBlast work is optimizing it to be able to be viewed on a phone. Because one thing that SCMA as a college museum, a campus museum, is reaching students and students have a higher um, reachability on their phone. So some of what I do is optimizing our web content to be able to be viewed on a phone. So we send out two monthly e-blasts, one SCMA from home e-news and one shop and membership newsletter. So my first step with making an e-blast is finding the content. So I spend a lot of time on here, you can see our SCMA website. So gathering 
the different events that are going into our eblast as well as on the shop website because we do for our mid month is a lot of promo of the shop as well as unfuddle where staff can submit their content for promotion as well as emailing back and forth with Lauren, our membership coordinator, and Justin, our shop coordinator. Um, and then once I have all the content, I get to work on making it fit into our brand guidelines. So our brand guidelines are pretty new. It was part of an initiative that started in 2018, um, this rebrand. And we need to make sure that all of our, even our emails have to be consistent with our brand guidelines so that shows us here you can see our color palette so we use these colors in all of our communications this is an example of our font that we use in all our communications and our new logo as of 2019. Um, one thing that i think is really cool about formatting our text is that it also focuses on accessibility so this asterisk on this red font is to talk about how red font isn't always accessible if it's too small it can be really hard to read so part of our brand guidelines is that our red fonts have to be size 18 or larger to make sure that they're accessible for everyone on the screen that also informs our type hierarchy in our eblast and making sure that we're consistent and recognizable with our style throughout all of our communications so here are some of the images of the actual eblast. Obviously they look a little different because they're not in an actual email, but you can see a very consistent style um, throughout all of them, which is what I spend most of my time with the museum working on with different, here there's event promotion. You can see some of the shop promotion, all the different things that we include in our communications to engage people with the museum. Um, another thing I do is list management. So obviously we have to figure out who to send all of our things to. So we do that through a site called Constant Contact where we have different lists of people to get our communications. And then what list you're on informs what form of communication you're going to get. Um, some examples are like active members are going to get the shop and the first of the month e-blast. Or if you sign up for a certain event, you'll get specific to that event eblasts, um, as well as event um, promotion and engagement is another part of my job. So this is a screenshot of an eblast we sent out to promote the Miller lecture, which was super amazing. But it's also an example of communications that promote just one specific event, not necessarily our full eblast, which has sometimes 10 events on it. So after we send out an eblast, I also do reporting on the eblast. So this is some of the statistics that we get after we send out an eblast, which is super interesting. Shows us how many people we sent it to, how many people opened it, um, how many times we sent it, as well as you can see here, um, this 31% represents our mobile opening percentage, which is once again, one of the reasons that I have to go through and optimize our content for being able to be viewed on a phone. Uh, this is my absolute favorite part of looking at eBlast after we've sent them is our heat map, is it shows us exactly how many times and how many people clicked on our each link in our eBlast. Um, our goal in our eBlast is always to link back to the website. We're always trying to get people to link back and hope that they'll explore more on our website. Um, but this will show us exactly how many people clicked on a button in our eBlast, which is super important for gauging how successful our eBlast is with engaging people. So here's some more statistics on that. Um, this right here is an eBlast statistic document that I maintain for every email that is sent out by the museum. So it's really interesting to look at how many people we sent these emails to, how many people opened it, and then how engaged they were with the links, because it can tell us, for example, with this Wadsworth associate email, had an event Zoom link for RSVP, 
So seeing how many people opened it and clicked on it from that communication is really important for seeing how effective our communications are. As well as this figure here is um, from our holiday pop-up shop. And you can see this immediate spike as soon as we sent out that um, communication about the pop-up shop. And it has a huge impact on how many people are buying things from the shop or even just opening the shop website. And this is another example of that. So this dotted line represents February and this green line is March. And we send out our shop and membership email on the 15th. So you can see just how dramatic the shop visits become um, once we send out that email highlighting a couple of special products in the shop every month. Uh, another part of my job is event promotion. So when we have specific events, um, there are 20 plus outlets that we submit them to depending on whether it's an exhibition, a student program, general programming, or something that's just for kids. So I format our website, um, the type on the website to submit to specific outlets. Um, it can be kind of difficult. Lots of outlets have different rules about here. You can see like 40 words or less, 80 characters. Um, it's a lot of managing that text to submit it to different outlets, as well as it's made me get pretty good at resizing images on Photoshop because I have to have about four different like web sizes to submit to each outlet, which is pretty cool. Um, it's a new skill I had to take on, as well as postering. Um, this was something that was a big part of my job before the pandemic. I was doing a ton of postering all the time, but we're slowly getting back to that as students come back on campus. Um, so I used to poster about once a week with upwards of two events to poster for, and we would poster both on the SEMA campus in the libraries, um, in the residential houses, different places like that, as well as downtown Northampton. And it takes some familiarity to know where you're allowed to poster, where someone's gonna take your poster down immediately and you need to make sure to like check in with the office and make sure it's okay. Um, at times I was postering sometimes for like four events and I had 50 posters for each event. Um, it can be a struggle, but also I love how um, clean and beautiful these posters are. And I love seeing students engage with our events on campus. So postering is a really important tool for reaching, especially students where they are. Um, and then my personal interest um, in diversity, equity, access, and inclusion is really important to me. And I'm super glad that SCMA is really engaged with that and wants to engage with their audience about that. Um, this is a screenshot of the SEMA um, website where they talk about their commitment to diversity, equity, access, and inclusion. Um, so I previously have worked with the Contemporary Austin, um, which is a contemporary art museum in Austin, Texas, through high school, promoting student engagement with the museum and making sure that students felt like the museum was a place they could really go and feel included and was like a social hub for people, um, especially young people. And I love that the um, that SEMA as a campus museum kind of has focused both my academic interest on like access and higher education, as well as accessibility um, for students. Like it brings all of my interests together. So I've really loved working at SEMA. And it's given me the opportunity to work on this creative brief, which is highlighting um, how to highlight artists of color specifically. Um, and I'm bringing in highlights from Ariella, we'll talk about this later, but her student highlights page, as well as we've had some features on the blog. Um, this is a quote from an interview on the blog with Camille Bacon, who is a Smith senior, talking about the impact that Black refractions had on her as seeing herself represented in a museum space. So I'm trying to bring together the best parts of that interview and that feeling, as well as the student highlights page with Ariella we'll talk about. Um, and now I'm gonna hand it back to Martha. Let me. 
Thank you so much, Charlie. That was wonderful. Um, now I'd like to introduce Ariella High C as CMA's Digital Communications Work Study Assistant. Welcome, Ariella. Hi, thank you so much, Martha. Um, so I'm just going to also jump right into talking a little bit about my work. Okay, so um, I'm Ariella, I use she, her pronouns, and I am a studio art major at Smith, and I'm in the museum's concentration, along with working as a digital communications assistant at SCMA. So one of the main tasks that I complete for work is updating the SCMA website, and more often than not, these updates are going to take place in the SCMA from home section, which was created at the beginning of the pandemic by Martha. And this page essentially hosts a multitude of resources for interacting with the museum virtually. I've actually recently added a small section to the SCMA from home page called Explore the SCMA Collection. And I highlight sections from the five college database categorized by a specific artistic medium or just by a single artist to allow for a more selective experience in exploring artworks at the museum. And I actually began working at SCMA last June as an intern for the marketing department. So over the summer, I was able to create and design an entirely new page for the website. And this page is called Student Highlights. Um, I started by working on a creative brief where I explored uh, my intentions for creating this page, which came from my experience as an art student, always wanting to see more of an art community at Smith. Um, and I felt that seeing other students' artwork and gallery events acknowledged by the museum would encourage more students to continue creating and building this social scene. But given our remote situation, this page is also just a place where anyone can browse content that is generally more geared towards students. For example, um, here's showing recent gallery exhibits that are always online and also in the galleries for students on campus now, um, and also highlighting student artwork, such as a variety of different zines made by various clubs that are affiliated with Smith. Um, and I've also wanted to highlight work by recent alumni that um, were art students at Smith and also just create creative ways to interact with the collection, such as themed playlists um, and quizzes that involve works from the collection. So beyond keeping parts of the website updated, I also work on uploading to the SCMA YouTube channel. Recently, we've shared recordings of Zoom lectures from the museum's own cur curatorial and education department and also guest artist lectures coming from the art department. Um, and here you can see the work of Smith students also being shared on the website. And one of the projects that I really enjoyed working on with Martha and many others that last fall was the Then Now Next virtual exhibit. Um, and this exhibit opened last fall because and because the galleries were completely closed to the public, having this virtual aspect to the exhibit was really crucial. Um, and so part of this exhibit um, had the purpose of highlighting different pairs of artworks and their relationship to one another. So this is sort of from my computer and a picture into what it looks like when I work on preparing all these different images in Photoshop to be ready for the website. And often this work takes a lot of patience as the cropping and sizing of certain images has to go through a long series of trial and error before finally um, getting the okay from the whole team. So you can see here a bunch of different examples of all the little details involved in preparing these works. And here is the end product of the Explore the Collection page. And moving on from the website, um, I have recently been spending a lot of my time working on our social media. So at the beginning of the pandemic, SCMA formed a social media team consisting of representatives from every department. And together we worked to create a variety of consistent content to share with all of our different audiences. Um, and on our social media 
platforms. We try to avoid excessive details or academic language or really long captions, um, just in an attempt to reach our audience best and be accessible and um, create enjoyable content to see. And this is a little picture of some of our guidelines for character length um, and that sort of thing when posting on Facebook and Instagram. Um, and we try to plan out a lot of the content through um, a program called Hootsuite where you can schedule your posts. And this is something that I've been working on training Charlie in so that um, he can also be a part of prepping and creating content to share. And despite our attempts to have everything scheduled out um, and stay ahead on things, sometimes posts fall through. Um, and so we've started a, um, I've made a spreadsheet for backup posts ideas. Um, and here is an example of a bunch of images that I just found inspiring or interesting that I went and saved um, in this table to potentially make a post about in the future, um, which is something that I really enjoy doing because I just get to scroll through art <laughs> for a few hours and see what stands out. Um, so that pretty much sums up everything that I work on at SEMA. Fantastic. Thank you so much, uh, Ariella, and thank you so much to you as well, Charlie. Um, it's really, uh, thank you for all the work that you do on behalf of the museum, and I have to say it's a real pleasure working with you both. I feel so fortunate. So it looks like we do have some time for questions, um, if anyone has any. Um, okay, first question. Have you learned anything Have you learned anything that has been beneficial outside of your work with the museum? Um, so maybe it's transferable skills that you can bring outside your, your current positions. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. <laughs> um, I definitely feel like working with the museum has given me a lot of familiarity with different like softwares that I wouldn't have been trained on beforehand like constant contact photoshop um as well as just some work with like microsoft excel um are skills that i just got to brush up with um with my role at the museum yeah i have to echo all of that um and also i don't know if this is a sort of cheat answer but in working with other museums um i have used a lot of the skills that I got at SEMA just in like being in a part of meetings um, and interacting with other staff members. That's been great. Great. Okay, the next question, what is your favorite part of your work? Either one, either of you can start. Um, I, I love getting to interact with art. Um, it really, really, I think I, previously thought that I would have to be in a curatorial position to do that, but that has definitely not been the case. Um, and I think there's a lot of satisfaction in working with your audience so closely. I feel like we get to see a lot of the reward of audience interaction. I definitely agree, Ariella. I think that my favorite part of working at the museum is engaging the Smith community at large. And as much as SEMA has both a campus presence and a presence in the wider community, I really enjoy engaging Smith students. And I feel like Smith students are a big part of our social media presence, as well as postering or e-blast receivers. Excellent, thank you. Next question, which type of social media posts from SCMA tend to be more popular or go viral? Have either of um, you observed that? I, I think people love to see other people, um, even if they're, you know, following a museum to see some artwork. Uh, there's something exciting about seeing other people, especially seeing some behind the scenes action, which we've gotten to share recently. Um, for example, just 
different curators or educators um, looking at the storage at the museum or being in the galleries when no one else was getting the chance. I definitely agree. I mean, that's what I love to see. I love to see um, pictures of museum staff or things that you might not be privy to if you were not inside the museum. I think it's a special little treat. I agree with you both. Great. Um, do you let's see? Do either of you think that some form of marketing will fit in with your future professional goals? I definitely think that marketing is now a skill that's needed in almost any job. Like you need to have some familiarity with things like branding and like being able to present to a wider audience. So even if I don't go into marketing specifically, I think that these skills are super transferable and super useful. Yeah, absolutely. I think in a strange way, a lot of things have become marketing and have become online true great um are there uh, are there specific other museum sites that you use and as, as an example or that you are inspired by um this is actually sometimes part of i think both of our work where we search through a bunch of different um similar especially other college and university museums and just sort of check out um, what they're doing and how they're approaching different topics. So um, I really like the Smart Museum. It has a very cool website. Charlie, do you have anything to add to that? Um, I think I have more familiarity with the like five college museums broadly, but I do enjoy looking at like the Mount Holyoke um, museum or specifically like Hampshire has a children's book museum so it's interesting to see how their website has to pander to like a different audience and this goes this question actually goes back to um, one of the guiding factors and that is um, that we we do we do use the museum sector we you know because this is such a particularly an unusual time this past year we um, we do a lot of looking around at other institutions, you know, museums 10, as well as um, other college art museums. So it's a very important part of, of the work that we do. So let's see what the next question is. Do you plan to work at museums after Smith? I definitely um, in, am interested in the idea. This is now like the second museum that I've worked with and I feel like I keep discovering things that make it interesting and like a a very vibrant place that fosters like social change, which is something that I'm really interested in. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna try. <laughs> Thinking about communications as a two-way process, have you gotten any memorable feedback on posts or other communications you've been involved in? Um, I, one comes up for me, um, with, there was a lot of like student work that I was sharing on the student highlights page. And I know that, um, I guess the marketing team, like in the greater college had also picked up on it and, um, shared it on their social media platforms, which reach a lot more people than just the museum. Um, and then I saw from the friends of mine who are the creators of the work kind of feeling um, uh, like sort of cheated by the college in a way that they were like flexing their work without really like interacting with them in a meaningful way. So sometimes when you put things online that are already online, it's just they tend to like build up and, and yeah, um, that was definitely informative to see. I think that um, on like a different side of the communications process, um, we get a lot of feedback on eBlast on like what best practice is to linking things like should we link them to the website? Should we link them directly to the webinar? So we get some feedback about like 
if our communications are direct enough and if they're directing people to the the actual thing that they're interested in. I also think, uh, Charlie, about your your e blasts um, that your your I can speak as your supervisor that your your skills in that area have really um, deepened and widened in a way that um, I think I, I just think that your work your posts your e blasts are. are I don't know. I don't know if we're saying more memorable, but um, stronger. So I'm just gonna put that out there as always a comment. So what else do we have? A great question. How do you think SCMA can better connect with SC with Smith students? Um that I think about that one a lot. <laughs> um I yeah, I think it's it's like what both Charlie and I are really interested in, which is um, just students being able to see themselves represented through different artists, uh, contemporary artists, younger artists, queer artists, um, artists of color, all of that. Yes, I definitely agree. And that's why I'm working on this creative brief to feature more um, artists of color, because some of our collections do tend to be more contemporary with artists of color which means that the process of securing the rights is a little more complicated because if the artist is still alive, the estate might, there's not an estate, it's the artist itself who is in charge of their presence. Um, so there is like a process of securing those rights, which is why I'm presenting in the hopes that we can put some work and time into securing um, the rights to post on our social media with artists of color and queer artists and things like that. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, let's see. Um, these are all really great questions. The next one is, what surprised you most when you started to work for the museum? Um, I actually only started working here last summer, so things have always been remote for me, but I was still always surprised by the sense of community and just how well everyone knew each other. And like when I've, since I've returned to the museum, um, museum recently uh, even though we we're all behind masks like I was recognized by a lot of the staff and just got to see people in person which was really exciting. I would say something that surprised me was how much I'm working with like figures and um, like statistics which is not really like my area of expertise and not something you really think about when you're thinking about an art museum which is primarily communicating visually um, so it's been really interesting to look at how like metrics and figures factor into that and factor into my work. How do you use the data points such as the constant contact open and click rates and heat maps to inform your future communications? I think that it's super important to be like kind of reactive with that. So if people are interested in this kind of like say for example there's an event um, that focuses on a certain topic I think it's super useful to be able to communicate that to other like museum members and say like people love this or people loved this kind of um, shop content like you know proceed with that information as you will. I also think placement uh, sometimes um, links don't get clicked. And so that's something to think about, like, okay, why wasn't that one clicked and all these other ones were? Um, let's see what else we have. Would it be helpful for either of you to learn how much revenue for the museum your work has generated? Um, I don't know if it would be helpful for me personally. I, I feel like that is definitely important things to know, but I think a lot of the time I just want to know if if people found things interesting or if it made them smile or made them curious. I think that it's super helpful specifically looking at the shop and membership emails, like seeing how successful and how immediate that spike is after that email is sent out, especially seeing that like 
if Justin has sent me a specific product um, to sell, like the Black Futures book, and then how it was sold out later after that e-blast went out is super gratifying and helpful to see that featuring that item had a direct impact on sales. Let's see, um, what is something that surprised you most about the work that you do? Or what are you surprised about now, before you had this job and now that you have this job? Is there anything that you were surprised about, like process, content? Um, I think definitely learning how many people are involved um, behind social media was really interesting to find out, especially like at a museum the size of SEMA, there's not that many staff members, but so many of the staff members are involved um, in what we post and share. And similarly, I was interested to figure out how long like it takes to go into a single communication that may seem really straightforward to the viewer. But in reality, it took me three hours to draft this and then I have to send it to Martha who has to look at it for a couple hours to make sure that it's right. And then we send it to a broader audience to make sure that if anyone catches something that we didn't do correctly, like the number of eyes that have to be on something before it can be posted and approved is really interesting and not something that like your average viewer really thinks about. Thank you. Do you feel you have control of the responses of the audience to posts at all times? And has it ever gone off the rails? I definitely don't feel like I have control. I don't think there <laughs> is any way to have control over how people will respond. I can respond to that. Charlie, you go in the night follows. Um, I'm going to cede this one to you, Martha. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there are moments where um, um, particularly um, timely um, events or something that's related to current events and, and people have responses and um, that are unexpected. Um, you know, if they're we have no control over what people do respond to and um so we just let we depending on we'll respond you know we'll respond in kind you know we'll 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 communicate um and and also if there are events or people are asking for more information then it actually leaves with the marcom department and we go to the curators or to the person who knows the most about these responses. And and sometimes it's a group of people, sometimes it's, um, and craft a response that's actually thoughtful and accurate. And um, so there, so I wouldn't say it's gone off the rails. It's just, they're asking for deeper, more thoughtful responses than, than the, our department has the knowledge to, to provide. So we, we bring it to our, our people know. And so I wouldn't say it's going off the rails, but it definitely um, takes it to another level in that engagement. And but we we don't have control over what people do post. Um, somewhat of an answer. <laughs> um, let's see, we have maybe time for one or two more questions. Um, how has working in the pandemic been for each of you? Um, there's been a lot of in uncertainty, especially starting out um, and just like navigating how to interact with all of our audiences when um, pretty much none of them could enter the museum in the ways that we were used to. Um, I personally really enjoy having the flexibility to work from home, but I do miss just being in a museum and being able to like every time that I sat down at my desk I could 
pop into the museum and just like take a look if we have something new on display. So I do miss that, but I think some of the flexibility and accommodations that have come from working from home are super great. Well, I think, I think those are our questions. Um, so thank you both so much. Um, again, uh, it is such a, a pleasure to work with you both. And I feel like I am so fortunate. And um, I hope everyone, thanks, thanks to all who have come and I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. <laughs> And I just wanted to thank everyone again and thank Ariella, Charlie, and Martha for their presentation and Louise Krieger for her assistance behind the scenes today. We have a number of programs coming up this month, including Open Eyes on April 22nd and the final program of the series Student Voices on April 28th. You may register on our website, sma.smith.edu, or stay tuned for some sneak previews on our social media, or sign up to receive email communications on our website for more information about this and other museum happenings. Finally, I wanted to thank our fabulous members and donors who make programs like this possible. And if you are not a member or you have a question about membership, please go to our website for more information. We hope to see you soon and thank you so much. <laughs>